Well, well, well. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, good night, you lovely folks. Joining me here nice and early over at Marvel Snap Zone. As always, it's great to see you. Hopefully, you're doing very well, much like I am, and hopefully everything is well in the world of Marvel Snap. We're back today for more community deck highlights. It's going to be taking a look at some of the things you guys are submitting to us and submitting to the global Marvel Snap community as deck lists that you're playing, that you're having success with, and you would recommend to other people. Going to be trying to do something a little bit different today. Um, it's been almost a week now since the global release of Marvel Snap. It's kind of crazy how fast it's gone, to be honest. But that means some of you new players are almost at your way, but knocking at the door of pool number two. It's almost time for you to be grabbing some of those cards. So today, I'm going to look at a fan favorite archetype from pool number one, and I'm going to show you some of the small upgrades you can be expecting to make, some of the very cool cards that slot into it once you start finding them when you get into pool number two. That's going to be in today's deck of pool two, Dino Control. This was a user submission by user MDRM BK7. Not going to try and butcher that one too much if I can help it, so by all means check out their list in the comments section in the article down below. If you want the exportable deck list for this, try it out yourself. If you've got the cards, you can grab it from the article version of this video in the description box below. And if you want to keep us doing this, keep supporting Marvel Snap Zone and show us we're doing a good job and you want more of the same, hit that subscribe button, make sure you turn on notifications, press the bell, uh, and it just lets us know that we're you know doing something that's worth doing over here, which is kind of great one way or the other. So as always folks, going to break this one down for you card by card and show you a little bit of what we are up to. The big payoff for the Dino Control deck, as I say, fan favorite from pool number one. You see this quite a lot uh, early in the the journey of Marvel Snap. Uh, Devil Dinosaur, really sweet card, gone through a number of changes in its time in Snap so far. Five cost card, three base power, but has plus two power for every card in your hand. So this deck is going to be looking to utilize some really uh, commonplace power cards that are going to incidentally add cards back to your hand to keep this dino big, fresh, and invigorated over the course of the game, hopefully winning a location by itself or with a little bit of help from a friend or two. Uh, so yeah, we've got a small handful of cards in this deck that come from pool 2. We'll kind of talk about them briefly as we go. But most of this shell actually comes from pool 1, the collector's levels and the starter levels. There are 5 pool 2 cards in this deck, of which, to be honest, most of them are fairly replaceable. We're just going to give you a tease of what you can see uh, going forward heading into pool 2. Uh, the first kind of package here we're going to talk about uh, from pool 2, Sunspot, a really powerful one drop that every time you have energy left over at the end of your turn, it's going to get plus one power for every unspent energy you have. Makes it a really good one drop on rate, gets very, very large if you want it to, if you're playing slightly off curve, and it's definitely one of the pool inclusions from this deck from pool 2, but we are pairing it with the Infinort, the Infinort card from pool 2 you're going to see a lot of moving forward, sees a lot of play in a variety of shells, uh, but we think this is a good shell for Sunspot because we're playing the Infinite alongside it. We can kind of skip turn five if we want to, uh, to play this on turn six, and we're not like missing out on tempo because Sunspot's going to eat all that energy up for us. And of course, the Infinite 20 power on a six cost unit is the biggest unit in the game, uh, and that's definitely worth something all by itself. Um, Agent 13 is in my opinion at least, the biggest inclusion from pool 2 from this archetype. One cost card costs you two, uh, has two power I should say, sorry, uh, and adds a random card to your hand when you play it. So really good on rate, uh, solid body, nice and early on, just replaces itself, keeping those dinos big, keeping your hand size steady. In a similar vein, we've got Cable in the deck here, not quite as good as Agent 13, but has the upside of ripping a card from the bottom of your opponent's deck instead. Uh, which is just really powerful and is again going to keep that hand nice and flush for your devil dinosaur. Scorpion here. Scorpion, a card that uh, got a buff during beta and as a result actually sees quite a bit of play at the moment. Afflicting all your opponent's hand with minus one is really good early on. You take maybe four to five power away from their hand sometimes uh, and that can just be you know, basically a seven power two drop at its like peak, which is obviously very, very good on rate and has some incidental effects when taking power off of things like Iron Man. So it suddenly, you know, gives negative two. Uh, number of really cool interactions with Scorpion, a great interaction piece, definitely kind of replaceable for a deck like this, but uh, good at slowing down people that are trying to flood the board in the mid game. 
A Sentinel here, a poor one inclusion that never really goes away from this deck. Just makes another Sentinel when you play it. A three power, good rate for a two drop card. Going to keep your hand nice and flush for that Devil Dinosaur once again. Another Paul in two inclusion in this list. Uh, definitely not required in my opinion, but good location denial. You could play something like Scarlet Witch over this if you don't have it. Storm, going to flood a location, meaning that the next turn is the last turn you can play cards there. This is a really powerful one-two punch alongside a number of cards that can dominate locations. The big one in this deck being Jessica Jones. Uh, you want to storm a location and then follow it up immediately with Jessica Jones on the following turn, meaning that Jessica will get her bonus and uh, then obviously that location is locked off and no one can play to it anymore. Really good one-two punch that you'll see in a lot of decks moving into pool number two. Uh, White Queen, a cool addition in this deck. Uh, four drop card that got a buff, doesn't really kind of see enough play in my opinion, but it's going to draw a copy of the highest cost card in your opponent's hand. Again, keeping that hand very flush for your Devil Dinosaur. Uh, we've talked about the Dino already. Really powerful on reveal here from Spider Woman. Spider Woman, a card that also saw a buff during the beta. Now much bigger than she was before and afflicts all your enemy uh, units at a location with negative powers. So really good on rate as a 5 drop in this deck. Uh, the last card we need to look at here, Odin. Odin, very, very strong in combination with a number of on reveal cards in this deck. Can definitely give your Dino some final turn power the opponent might be uh, not expecting by triggering Agent 3. Cable, uh, Sentinel, even Spider Woman to reduce their board once again on the final turn of the game. So, really good haymaker at the end of the game here as well. Uh, yeah, powerful bunch, really sweet pull two list, uh, showing off some of the real upgrades and cool things you get to play with as you head into pool number two. As always, folks, sadly, we'll be playing against some Pool 3 players today while we test this deck, I'm sure. But hopefully we can show you a little bit about what the deck is trying to do, the normal play patterns, and uh, give you an idea if it's something you want to explore yourself uh, in that Pool 1, Pool 2 area. Uh, so not going to be playing to Oscorp Tower, obviously. Uh, I think we're just going to get a nice and early sunspot down here in a, a location. Start racking this thing up. Uh, heading into probably turn 3 if we are playing... Sentinel into Sentinel, maybe? Maybe we play Agent 13 next to it. Would much rather have this in play, racking up any leftover energy that I haven't got. Sadly, it landed in the sewer system, which is not ideal. So, gonna, gonna choose to not play here for now. We'll play off to the right, play our Sentinel over here, make another copy in our hand. Looking for our Devil Dino, uh, or maybe our Odin here, to try and give us some end game punch. Very exciting stuff. Sentinel coming on back to our hand, so good chance we play three costs worth of cards here in Sentinel Agent 13. Opponent daredeviled into Oscorp Tower, a little confusing. Okay, not finding any of our big payoffs here, but we're still just able to play on curve and have a very full hand. So I think what I'm going to do here actually is Scorpion Agent 13. And I think I'm just going to spread the love here a little bit. Uh, try and play into Oscorp Tower moving forward. Get Agent 13 to draw me a card. Scorpion, my opponent. All seems pretty good. All pretty powerful on rate. So let's do a little bit of that. Agent 13, going to pluck us a Hulkbuster. Okay, not entirely sure we're going to have much use for that, but maybe we will. We have gained a donated Daredevil, which is going to be pretty cool uh, heading into turn 6, actually. This is interesting. Because now I have this infinite, I kind of want to skip turn 5. But I have so much going on that maybe maybe I just don't. Uh, it does play very well with Sunspot, though. Shall we try it? Let's see if we can get away with it. So I'm going to go... Jessica Jones into Oscorp Tower. And hopefully my opponent just lets me skip turn 5 and play the infinite and dominate a location with it on turn 6. That would be pretty cool. So no play from the opponent. They're going to let Jessica Jones do her thing. So Sunspot dominating in the middle here. So now we know our opponent isn't playing into Sunspot this turn. They're playing a Vision. That could be a little annoying. Juicing up my Sunspot by 5 here only really pulls us in line with the opponent in mid, which I think we can do better than. I think I would much rather just play this Devil Dinosaur and skip out on the Infinite this game. Cool to have the option, to be honest. Uh, the vision being on the right here, not super important. They can obviously move it wherever they want to. So I think we're just going to play our Devil Dino. And I think we just keep challenging the two locations that we already have. No need to challenge uh, the sewer system. And we're obviously not playing it on the left because of Jessica Jones' ability. So 
Dino here, 13 power. Look at that. Super flush. And we can just spend this last turn playing out stuff that's going to replace itself in order to get bigger. So let's go... White Queen Sentinel on the left here and just have a really flush hand. Hopefully the Dino itself. I think we, I think we snap here. Pretty confident. Dino should win the right and uh, we have a chunk of power here on the left. Opponent does move the vision over, so... Do we have enough? We steal an Odin from our opponent, obviously not uh, not particularly relevant anymore. But look at this, just six cards left in hand. This dino is huge. 19 power on the left. You've got to be kidding. Ugh. Well, that's exceptionally unlucky. I think it's very hard for us to lose that game, but unfortunately our opponent managed to Jubilee into the Infinaut, uh, kind of showing you a little bit of the power of this card here too, which just randomly adds 20 power to Oscorp Tower, which was, was hard going, so kind of robbed in that game, unfortunately. I think we were pretty comfortable snapping, but uh, unfortunately our opponent's Jubilee really kind of bailing them out. <laughs> just, that's the way it goes sometimes. Again, these games are so short and snappy that you really don't have to worry about losing sleep over stuff like this. Finding a nice early play here with Agent 13. Let's let's chuck it into Monster Island. Oh, that infinite leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Huh? Okay, well, we're doing all right in drawing things so far that are keeping us on curve. Let's start spreading the love a little bit and Scorpion into Monster Metropolis. All the monster locations come out for us right now. Ugh. <laughs> that infinite. Okay, so no play for our opponent. This is pretty good. It means we score reductions on as many things as possible. Ooh, okay, Sinister London is... A really powerful location for our Devil Dinosaur. So I'm pro... I, I could storm it away... But I feel like I probably don't want to do that. I think what I'm going to do is just Sentinel. Add multiple Sentinels to my hand. Play Jessica Jones. Maybe not on Sinister London. And then look to spam a Dino into, into Sinister London on turn 5. Very, very flush hand. The opponent will wave. So I guess I'm spamming a Hulk into Sinister London this turn, huh? That seems pretty good. Let's make multiple hulks. Whoa! Oh no! My opponent has a leader, which is going to make multiple leaders, which makes multiple hulks. Okay, this could be a little dodgy. Devil Dino's going to have to do some carrying here. We are going to get uh, pretty ahead in multiple locations here, to be fair. But winning Sinister London might be a little hard. Opponent will Jubilee. No more Infinauts, please. Oh, what is going on today? Oh, my God. Well, I mean, these Sentinels can rack up some power and keep us nice and level, but... Like, I think we're okay as long as there's not suddenly 13 power on the left here. There's obviously a sunspot staring us down. We don't want to make these dinos too small. So I guess we just like sentinel sentinel. So many Jubilees into Infinaut. Kind of showcasing the power of this, this unit outside of our deck. Opponent unfortunately letting their sunspots grow. I think that means we are dead in the war. No, we actually get there on the tiebreaker, I think. Because we were ahead by more in Monster Island. Whoa. The sweat was real. These Infinauts are absolutely... Uh, Giving us terror in spots where we think it should be kind of hard to lose. One more with pull two dino control. Let's see if it has a positive record or a negative one at the end of the video, shall we? 
Devil Dino definitely been pulling its weight. Nice sunspot into Murray Isle. Uh, nice and early here. Get some real uh, power stuck on this, courtesy of the location. Seems pretty good. Stark Tower as well. Wow. Uh, I'm going to start playing into Murray Isle and then look to storm Stark Tower away. Rack up some power here. Colossus. Okay. If I draw Jessica Jones, I'll definitely storm. Okay, I think I'm going to White Queen into Stark Tower if this is the case. See if I can get some power here before uh, storming it out. We steal our opponent's Destroyer. Well, that's a pretty good one to have stolen. But uh, that does mean it's in their hand and ready to go already. <laughs> Could be a bit of an issue. <laughs> kind of makes me not want to armor, unfortunately. So I guess I'm going to Storm... Hopefully my opponent plays to Miri Isle here and I can uh, I can Spider Woman over here. Just plays a Deathlock. Okay. So I actually think this might be one of the games where we skip turn 5 to try and play an Infinaut because we have to beat a Destroyer on turn 6 and we can juice up this Sunspot. I'm going to take the risk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try taking this line here. Might regret that. So unfortunately, I think I have to now play this Infinite to the Tinkerer's Workshop and hope that... Uh, hope that's enough. Nope. Not going to be enough. Rough beats. Well, we took the chance on showing you the Infinite line and then sadly uh, got punished by this Hobgoblin taking away our flooded zone, which is kind of a rough beat. But oh well, these things happen. Yeah, um, definitely kind of saw the power of Devil Dino there for sure. Wanted to try and showcase the Infinite stuff at the end and got a little bit punished for it. But this card just remains a really powerful mainstay moving forward in all things Marvel Snap. And... Uh, I think the additions to this archetype, especially Agent 13, just very, very powerful card to be opening in Pool 2. Uh, that plays very, very well with this whole deck. And hopefully you're looking forward to trying it out, much like I was when I cracked it for the first time. If you have enjoyed this deck highlight, try it out for yourself. Let me know what you think in the description, uh, not in the description, in the comment section down below. Uh, or check out the article over on Marvel Snap Zone and grab the deck list for yourself. Uh, if you haven't already, consider chucking us a subscription. It would be very cool to see you for more of these. Uh, in the future. Otherwise, I have been Howling Minds, you've been amazing, and this has been Marvel Snap Zone. Have a good one. Stay safe.